what we're looking at here is a temperature sensor and the probe is inside this pocket which has been created with carbon felt on my workbench and this pocket has been made up to simulate the pocket of your jacket or some other piece of apparel and what we're doing is testing what is possibly the best you're going to find for an electronic hand warmer in 2020 and possibly for a year or two beyond that and that is not only due to the fact that this is at least 10 degrees centigrade higher than the closest electronic hand warmers we've been able to source as well as other factors such as weight, size, and the ability to swap fresh cells in and out of it. And there we are. Well, we just managed to kiss 71 degrees centigrade. What is unique about what we're looking at right now is we are looking at a temperature that's just about reaching 165 degrees Fahrenheit which we found in testing is about the maximum amount of heat that any of the liquid fuel hand warmers will support. I think that might be due to the exothermic reaction limits anything beyond that but more importantly this temperature will be achieved without the need to provide oxygen to the device because it's electronic so this is a first that I've seen for this and as soon as this confirms to me it's going to hit 74 which it just is doing now let's reveal what this device really is and there we have it this best electronic hand warmer indeed is a flashlight with some of the newer technology in it such as a 21700 cell which to me is the ideal power source for a hand warmer and now we're going to go through some of the factors of this which make this possibly the most ideal electronic hand warmer for putting it in your pocket. We're going to discuss some of the advances in LED flashlight technology that is making this possible and go through them step by step. So what we're going to start with first is looking at what's called the MCPCB. This is what the LED gets mounted on and there are two types that we're looking at right now this red one is got a copper substrate on it and as we know copper is a very thermally efficient material for transferring heat this one over here which is more common in the budget flashlights is an aluminum MCPCB. It is not as thermally efficient as the copper. Aluminum is a lot cheaper and so these are cheaper to produce and this is what you're going to be putting into an economical low-cost budget flashlight. These don't produce heat by themselves they are just the thermal source 
for providing the LED with current and therefore an appropriate LED then gets flow soldered onto the MCPCB and when it does this is what you end up with. Here's an LED now that's been surface mounted on this MCPCB. Again copper on the back and when this LED is driven at 3 amps it can really produce a lot of heat as you just saw previously. So now we're looking at a 7135 driver and this is a 17 millimeter version which matches the flashlight that we just saw. Now this driver uh, we're looking at now it has eight of 380 milliamp 7135 chips and you can increase or decrease the output current by adding or removing these chips. Each chip adds or subtracts about 0 0.380 milliamps. So they're available in all those different configurations and so when we're putting together a flashlight and we want the maximum amount of heat therefore we want the maximum amount of amps and we go with a driver that has eight of those chips and it will accept an input voltage of 2.8 to 4.5 volts which of course with the 21700 cell that goes into this flashlight at a maximum voltage of 4.2 volts and a cutoff voltage of about 3 that turns out to be ideal. You can see half the chips are on the back of the driver half are on the front so then when we couple these together we end up with 3 amps going into this LED and therefore producing quite a bit of heat. What we're looking at here are two lithium ion cells. The green one is an 18650 lithium ion cell and this particular one is the highest capacity that is commonly available right now, the NCR 18650B and it boasts a capacity of 3400 milliamps however usually I don't find they go much more than 33. On the left here thanks to Tesla making them very popular the latest cell that is becoming increasingly popular is the 21700 lithium ion cell essentially the same thing in a larger package and the reason why it is now the go-to cell is because it packs a lot more power into what is not much larger in terms of its cubic millimeter dimensions so this cell has got 16,532 cubic millimeter capacity in it that you can pack your chemistry into. This one on the other hand has 24,233 cubic millimeters. So you can see that although we have a larger cell, we have 5 amp hours of capacity in this gray guy as opposed to the 3.3 here. Now when we translate that to something that you're driving at 3 amps in your pocket you can see where this is going to last longer than that and that's why we were excited when the first of these came out. Now you know these as a flashlight. 
However, before you add your MC PCB and your driver, these are called hosts. Now what we want to find in a good host in terms of radiating heat into your pocket, just like the radiator in your car or the heat sink on the CPU in your computer, are these radiant cooling fins that take the heat away from the pill and the pill is what the MCPCB and the driver are mounted into and then get screwed into the host and it's what makes contact with the head of the host and what we can do here is remove this and in here you should now be able to see the driver and the driver what is around it is it's sitting in what's called the pill that's why this light became an exciting new innovation when we discovered that you could get something with a 21700. Now why is this better than the hand warmer that we reviewed in the previous video? So you'll recall in the previous video that we looked at modifying these two popular electronic hand warmers that we sourced from China and what we did was we added these higher capacity cells to them and this one which takes two of the 18650s we were able to <clears throat> more than double or approximately double I can't remember now the capacity of this guy and we took three 18650s out of this one and put two of the 21700s in. Now the downside to these is that it takes about an hour or more to do the modification to them. You have to tear them apart as you saw and install these. The other factor with this is they achieve a maximum temperature of 60 as you saw with this guy we got 70. Now I think for the most important consideration all the other ones notwithstanding are the fact that when this one is depleted of its energy i.e. the battery going dead <clears throat> there's no way to just slip another one of these in or two in. Now you're carrying that much weight around that you can't use until you recharge it whether it's this guy or this guy. And now you've got the weight of that with two dead batteries as opposed to this with one. Now we compare the size of those this is convenient in your hand although you can wrap your hand around this quite conveniently too but the deal breaker for me is well first of all I want the 21700 going forward is I can just take one depleted cell out and put another one in and I'm good again for a couple of hours. So <clears throat> if I'm going to be gone all day I can carry three additional batteries and I'm good all day as opposed to this for all day I'd have to carry three of these guys to get through the day. It seems like it's a pretty obvious conclusion and then when I get home I can recharge these cells and I'm good to go again. You can carry an infinite number of these cells in your day pack depending on how long you're going to be going including multi-day trips. And again the advantage to the electronic is you don't require oxygen to keep these alive at their temperature. 
you don't have to refill them. They do not smell of naphtha and they can be turned on and off quite easily in order to save power when you don't need the heat in your pocket. So let's just summarize what you need to look out for when you decide you're going to go for using a flashlight as your ultimate electronic hand warmer. To start, you're best off to have a copper NC PCB which will conduct the heat. You want a driver that will drive your LED at 3 amps. You want a host which is the body of the flashlight that has good heat dissipation in it and allows for the heat to radiate off the head and into your pocket. It should also be as efficiently small as possible and uh, another thing to note of course this may come up and I forgot I've taken it for granted this driver also will be regulating your cell so that it will shut off when your voltage gets to the low voltage shutoff point of 3 volts and of course with this we want the 21 700 capable flashlight rather than the 18650. If you get all those sorted out you'll have a good heat source in your pocket for next winter.